Roger Berwick, you may have seen me on the likes of Ho Chandra, etc., demonstrating some of the SIP equipment. And here today we've got the 10-inch uh, professional heavy-duty cast iron table saw from SIP. Superb piece of heavy-duty equipment, and I'm using one of these in my workshop every day as my main uh, table saw through choice. Exceptionally good um, depth of cut, 75 millimetres uh, thickness of cut at 90 degrees and 53 millimetres at 45 degrees. Due to the powerful motor this has got, it does require a 16 amp uh, supply. The way we've got the table actually set up here, we've got the optional sliding carriage, which uh, is this side here. So normal, normal configuration, these two tables here, you would have one this side, but because we've got the optional carriage on, we have actually extended the table out to the uh, right hand side here, giving us the ability to rip cut and cross cut 8x4 sheets with the maximum capacities that we've got on the saw. What I've got here is a nice piece of thick hard iroko. We've got a tongue on there that we don't want, so we're going to actually use the saw to remove this tongue. We can bring the fence in. Now the fence locks at both the front and rear of the table, so we're getting no movement whatsoever in the fence. Good and solid, which is ideal for our working, so we know that we're not getting any deviation during the cut. If we're cutting this to say 100 millimetres, it's easy enough to slide the fence in, lining it up to the scale on here. But if we do need any fine adjustment, we can actually fine adjust it using the fine adjuster that we've got on the fence at the front here. We can then knock that down, we know our positioning is correct, and we're ready to make our cut. One thing that is important to be said at this time is you must, or it is advisable to put some form of extraction onto the saw to take away the dust and debris as we're doing the cut. There's a four inch extraction port on the back of the saw, as well as the actual crown guard extraction which mounts from that as well. An ideal uh, extraction source is one of SIP's 50 litre dust collector buckets, which conveniently actually sits underneath the saw and is readily accessible to switch on and off as we do the cuts. Now to run the wood through there to actually take off this rough tongue, it's a good idea to have a push stick because you don't want to get your hands anywhere in the red area. The red area is considered the danger area of the saw, so keep hands and um, yourself away from there. Now push stick wise, you can use a traditional wooden push stick that you can make yourself. Personally though, I do like a push stick which actually mounts over the fence, and I use this one a lot. It enables you to actually push the wood through whilst keeping your hand well away from any cutting surfaces. The other thing just to mention is anything you're doing, we do need to wear safety glasses and ear protection for your own health and safety. Okay, another feature with the uh, table saw is it actually comes with the mitre slide enabling you to cross cut your work. Now we can do this very simply just by bringing the cross slide in behind the wood and feeding it through into the saw blade to make our cut. One thing that is quite important when doing and taking a small end off though is to stop the saw to allow the saw to actually stop and you'll see the motor brake will actually bring it to a stop very quickly which is within health and safety um, regulations. Another nice feature of the mitre side is we have actually got preset set, um, divisions or angles on here giving us the regular angles that we are going to be using 15, 30, 45 degrees and to do an angled cut we can just set the slide to that position, bring our wood in and do the cut in exactly the same manner as we were a moment ago. So you've seen the use of the, slide, the mitre slide that comes with the standard saw. 
that if you're wanting to cut larger items or wider stock, it's a much better idea to have the optional sliding carriage which actually replaces it, as you can see here. The carriage itself is ball bear runs on ball bearings, lovely and free and smooth, and the nice thing is it will actually support longer items of wood for you. So if we were to look to cross cut this piece of board here, which is a piece of Iroko, we can bring that in, we can adjust the hole down so that the wood is actually held in place, actually meaning that we don't have to now hold the wood other than guide it through the saw. feature of the sliding carriage is we have actually got the ability to extend the fence much further. We also have a repetitive stop facility so we can drop that over if we were doing the successive repetitive cuts whether they be at 45 degrees or 90 degrees and that will enable us to do the cuts still held with our sliding carriage. One of the main features of safety is obviously you want to be able to raise and lower the blade because we want to reduce the height of cut for safety reasons. The best way to do it is wind it down on the handle which brings it down so the teeth of the blade are just crowning through the surface. Another feature we have is the tilt action so that we can actually tilt the saw to do our mitre cuts or any angle from 0 to 45 degrees. Now, when ripping narrow boards, whether the blade's at 90 degrees or 45 degrees, where we want to take thin strips, it's very difficult to angle the blade and get the fencing close enough. SIP have thought about that as well, and include the extrusion to give you the fine fence, which actually just attaches with two thumb wheels. We can now bring that in, that will enable us, with the angle of the blade, for it to clear the fence. At this time though, our, our actual scale can't be used but we can now do a straight cut. Another nice feature of the sliding carriage is the ability to actually cross cut large sheets, whether they be eight by fours. I've got a section of MDF here that we're going to run through and using the sliding carriage again the wood is safely held in place we can start the saw switch on the extraction because we're using the MDF things a lot of people say about a machine of this size is it's going to take up too much room in my workshop. Not a problem, if that's the case get one of the optional wheel kits from SIP, it enables you to actually lift the machine and wheel it to wherever you want to so if you wanted to store it at the back of a garage when not in use it's easy enough to move just by one person it's just going to roll where you want it to go. Now we mentioned earlier about the dust extraction on the saw, very important to take the, the dust away from the atmosphere SIP's 50 litre dust bucket works brilliantly with the saw, the 4 inch pipe connecting to the back of the saw and filtering down to half a micron, this is going to take away the majority of the, the saw dust as you're actually cutting. Simply switch on on the front, it's conveniently convenient to position it just under your saw and the filters inside, it's very easy to actually empty the drum when need be and you can see all the fine dust look that's come off the saw since we've actually been doing the cuts. The on-off switch for the saw is a no-volt release switch, or NVR switch as they're commonly known. 
to release the actual catch to open it we've got the green and red buttons the green to start and obviously the red to stop when the cover comes down the red button then on the front gives you an emergency stop position now when you start the saw the green button should be depressed and held until the saw blade is up to its standard running speed By doing that, it protects the capacitor and the motor for the longevity of the machine. The other important thing of a no volt release switch is should you be using the saw and a power cut occur, the saw will not switch back on again once the power source is restored to the machine for safety feature.